Hi guys. I know, it's been a way too long since I've done an update, but I am working pretty much full time now, you know, going to class. I just, I haven't had time <laughs> to do it really. Uh, but I've got a lot of stuff piled up here that's been waiting to be updated, so uh, there's going to be quite a few parts to it. Um, this is part one, obviously, and in this part I'm going to start with the most recent things that I've bought. Um, and then I didn't sort them in any way, like I usually sort them into Blu-rays, DVDs, and TV, but I just didn't bother just because I've got stacks of stuff and I need to hurry up and do this. And um, so it's all just kind of mixed in. So, uh, like I said, I'm not sure how many parts this is going to be, but I've got stuff that I bought, like, all the way back in January that hasn't been in, in an update yet, so, uh, a couple parts, three or four at least, or we'll see how it goes, I don't know, maybe fewer, I don't know, but we're just going to start off here, um, with stuff I actually just bought, uh, today. Um, the first thing I have here is, uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. This is the Best Buy exclusive steelbook. Um, there's the spine. And then I like the back there. I wish they kind of left all the um, credits off and just left the artwork, but I still like it. And then you've got um, your discs, and, uh, and there's some artwork back there as well. I don't know if you can see that, but um, the steel book was the same price as the regular combo pack, which is $19.99. Best Buy has been really kicking ass lately with their pricing. Um, they've had some amazing deals. So, and I love it when their steel books are the same price as the regular edition, so you don't feel like you're, you know, paying that much more for just the steel case. But I love the design. The only thing I wish they'd made it the tree a little smaller and brought the uh, title down a little bit, because as you can see, it's kind of really close to the top. But otherwise, nice steel book. Haven't seen the film yet, didn't get a chance to see it in theaters, so I'm really looking forward to watching it. Next up, we have one of my favorite shows ever, and I'm so excited to watch the commentaries tonight, but it is uh, Castle, the complete fourth season. Um, Best Buy has a coupon, a $10 off coupon, and they have it on sale for $27.99, so with the coupon, it's only $17.99, which is such a good price for um, TV on release day. Uh... I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, I really love this season. I've loved every season of this show. This is a show I can honestly say that hasn't had a bad season. Um, and I am so excited for season five. I actually haven't even opened this yet. It just came in the mail from Amazon. So it's still sealed, but as soon as this video is done, I'm going to break it open and watch it. Next up is, of course, Titanic on Blu-ray, one of my all-time favorite films. Couldn't wait to pick this up. I did really, really want that Amazon, ex I think it was an Amazon exclusive, the big box set. But they wanted like $70 for it, and it's a little pricey for just one movie, even though the box set was really nice. And I kind of wish I would have bought it now, because it's uh, completely sold out as of the last time I checked. And I've seen pictures, and um, I know Film Fan, Film Fan Pete did a video on it, and it looks so nice. Um... So maybe one day down the line, hopefully it'll come back in stock or it'll go on sale and I will definitely be picking it up. But for right now, I'm excited beyond belief to have this movie on Blu-ray. And you do get a shiny, nice shiny um, embossed slip. So, uh, And I just got the regular two-disc edition because um, they have a 3D one, obviously. But one, I'm not a fan of 3D. Two, I don't have a 3D player, so it wouldn't do me good. And I just don't think movies that weren't filmed in 3D should be converted. I don't know. But I've heard it looks good, so if you're into 3D, um, uh, that is one I hear you should pick up. So, But uh, Titanic, definite uh, classic. And I'm going to go and say it's my favorite James Cameron film. And um, I don't think Avatar deserves to, uh, deserve to overtake this as the number one grossing film at the box office. That's just my opinion, um, but I think Avatar is a little overrated, <laughs> in my opinion. But there you go. Next up, we have another show I am currently so obsessed with, it's not even funny, and it is Once Upon a Time, of course on Blu-ray, and you've got a awesome lenticular cover, I hope it's picking it up there, but then, uh, but you've got the characters up here, uh, and there's fairy tale personas, and then you 
move it and it goes to their storybook personas and then down here it also changes from storybook back to fairy tale land so um and this lenticular cover was only for the blu-ray um the dvd does have a slip cover it's just really shiny but uh obviously the show looks amazing on blu-ray uh and this one of the main reasons i'm such a fan of this is uh because of the phenomenal cast it just doesn't get any better than this cast honestly and I, re I, re I remember I did a review on the pilot uh, a while ago, and I don't I uh, don't think that review accurately reflected just how much uh, I enjoy this show. Uh, and so if you haven't watched it, I really urge you to watch it. Just a brief synopsis. Um, and it's also from the writers of Lost, so if you're a fan of Lost and haven't watched this yet, I do recommend it. But... Uh, basically, characters, um, they take the, you know, the most famous fairy tales and kind of put their own twist on them. So, uh, in the show, all the fairy tale characters have been cursed. And, uh, they are now living in a town called Storybrooke. But none of them remember their fairy tale identities, uh, except, uh, the evil queen, uh, slash Regina. Uh, and then, uh, Rumpled Stiltskin slash Mr. Gold. Um... They remember everything, but nobody else does. And uh, so that's kind of the short synopsis of it, and it's just so good. I am so obsessed with it, and I cannot wait for season two to start here in a couple weeks, so I really, really definitely urge you to check this out. So I was kind of pissed at Le at ABC for canceling Legend of the Seeker, um, So, but I'm really glad they picked this show up because this is my new fantasy series. Um, other than Game of Thrones, but that's not on right now, so this is definitely my pick for the best fantasy show currently on TV. Okay, uh, <laughs> next up we have um, another awesome show. All of these shows are awesome, and I urge you to watch them. Um, but it is uh, Sons of Anarchy, Season 4. I need to rewatch this, uh, hopefully, because I know Season 5 starts tonight. Um, but I didn't get a chance to make it all the way through this one again. But uh, I'm really excited for season five. I I don't like who they killed off at the end of this season. I don't know. I thought it was obviously really sad. But a lot of people want Clay to... to thought Clay should have died. Um, but I don't know. I, I know Clay's kind of not so good dude. But... I really love Ron Perlman, and I really don't want him to leave the show. That's the only reason I want Clay to stay alive, because it's kind of one of the reasons I started watching it, because I was such a, or I am such a big fan of Hellboy, and um, so when I heard Ron Perlman was going to be in this show, I definitely wanted to watch it, and obviously all the other actors are great too, but a uh, uh, phenomenal show, um, highly, highly recommended. Next up is one I think I've seen in everybody's update, but it is, of course, The Walking Dead Season 2. Uh, this season, uh, definitely a little slower than the first because I got the first season last Christmas and I watched all six episodes in one night. And then I went on to start Season 2, so obviously I just watched Season 1 and it was so fast, and then this one really slowed it down. Um, but... I liked it overall, I just think they spent a little too long, you know, looking for Sophia and all that. I just thought that was a little drug out. Um, they could have, you know, sped that up a little bit and then that way have some other stuff happen. Just to pick up the pace of the show, but definitely the final two episodes were pretty kick-ass. And uh, one character, I'm so happy they... I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it in case anybody hadn't watched it, but... One of the characters they killed off, I was so happy. I was just waiting and because I could not stand him. Oh, sorry, that kind of... But anyway, and then the other character, I was so sad that they killed off. I I don't know. I'm going to miss gonna miss that character a lot. Um, and I can't wait. Season 3 looks awesome. I've, had, I've never read the comics, but I, I have friends that have, and they say uh, when they get to the prison, it gets pretty awesome. And finally, or not finally, but a movie, taking a break from the TV, uh, the five-year engagement. Uh, I didn't get to see this in theaters either, 
Uh, so this was a blind buy, and I was so, uh, so glad that I picked it up. I wanted to see it in theaters, but like I said, I didn't get a chance. Uh, because when I saw the trailer, it had me l laughing all the way through it. And I love Jason Siegel and uh, Emily Blunt. They're both very funny, and it, it also has Alison Brie in it. Of course, most people know her from Community. Um, but I just thought it was... Um, it was really, I really liked it a lot. It was, it's not just a straight up, you know, romantic comedy. It's got some, a good uh, mix of drama in there as well to, to balance it out. So, um, it's just a really, really good movie. Uh, and as you can see, it says from the producers of Bridesmaids. Uh, Bridesmaids, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Okay. I didn't think it deserved all the hype. Um, but I think this is actually better than Bridesmaids. Um, but that's just my opinion. So basically the title kind of sums it up. It's, it follows Emily Blunt and Jason Siegel's characters, uh, over the ups and downs as they try to plan their wedding and, uh, you know, kind of everything that all gets in the way, uh, of them getting married. And like I said, I really recommend this one to you. Alright, um, here we go, some more TV, uh, but I got, uh, Warehouse 13 Season 1 and Season 3. I need to get Season 2, but I, this is a new show I started watching. I was looking for a, uh, fun show to watch over the summer, and a lot of people that I follow, like, on Tumblr and stuff recommended this to me, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a sci-fi channel show, um, and it's pretty much about these... Um, the two main characters are Pete and Micah, and they were secret service agents before they got recruited to the warehouse. And what the warehouse is, it houses all these artifacts from throughout, from, you know, history, throughout history. And what an artifact is, it's kind of like a, um, a really famous historical object that now possesses, you know, great power. And, uh, I'm trying to think of a good one as an example. They've had, uh... The one that comes to mind, I just watched the episode, is um, Pavlov's, Ivan Pavlov's bell that he used to train dogs with. If somebody uses it, because they, I don't know, like there was a dog lost in the warehouse and they had to get him, so it'll, it can attract any dog, um, any lost dog or whatever, but if you use it, um, it causes excessive drooling. Not all, um, that was just a, that was a comedy episode that they did that for, but it's kind of an example I don't know if that was even a good explanation, but, um, I don't know, I love history, and they kind of play around with it a little bit, like, they have a char character, H.G. Wells, you know, who obviously is a famous sci-fi writer from, kind of, the yeah, the Victorian era, he wrote, like, World of Worlds and stuff, but, uh, they kind of, um, wrote their own version where H.G. Wells is a woman who had all these great ideas, uh, but couldn't get published, so... Her brother kind of took them and published them for her, but, um, and, uh, shoot, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so it was just a, something fun to, uh, watch over the summer, and I love history, so I love the way they kind of play around with it a lot, but, uh, I'm going to order season one very soon. I've seen it, of course, but, uh, I picked these up from Movie Stop. I traded in a lot of stuff, so it didn't cost me anything, and they also had an awesome deal. They have buy one, get one free if you had your Blockbuster card. Um, if you gave them your Blockbuster card, I don't know why. They were just going to throw it away or whatever. I was like, sure, because these are 25 a piece. And I was really disappointed because I, I was hoping they'd be a better price on them used. But uh, so I bought, I got both of these for 25 bucks. Because these are what I originally went out there for, but I didn't want to spend $50 on two sets. But um, So I'm very, very happy with that. And I didn't need my Blockbuster card anymore because uh, all the ones around me are closed, <laughs> um, obviously, or I would still be working there. Another movie, Stop Find, awesome find, by the way. I finally got uh, Star Trek. This is the edition I wanted. That's what I've been searching for with the slip. Um, this was 12 bucks. Awesome. I love Movie Stop, but the closest one to me is like 30 35 minute drive so I don't get to go as often as I'd like but when I do I I, I, uh, I, 
I stock up. <laughs> and like I said, I had like I got like fifty dollars worth of trade in credit, so that was awesome. But anywho, back to this, but um, because I'd shown this, I bought the DVD from Blockbuster for like a dollar. Um, the one I worked at, but of course I wanted to get it on Blu-ray because this is, should be seen on Blu-ray only. Um, but it even still has the little paper on the back, so that's pretty awesome. Um, that's what obviously the cover looks like. And it also even has the insert, so I was very happy to find a used copy in such good condition for such a low price. Um, and I've been holding off on getting it because I specifically wanted this edition. And I watched the movie, and it is awesome. And this is coming from someone who knows nothing about the, the Star Trek universe. I've never seen an episode of the show. I've never, it's just never been anything I've been into. Um, but the movie's great. J.J. Abrams, fantastic. Um, so I look forward to the sequel. And I know it's probably going to be awesome as well. Alright, next up... <laughs> We have a DVD. Uh, it's a movie I've been wanting for a while. Uh, Much to do about nothing, obviously based on the play by Shakespeare. I love this movie. It's very funny. I've always believed that Shakespeare has been meant as oh, I can't talk. Shakespeare was meant to be, you know, seen on stage, you know, or and um, performed by talented actors. It's just I think that's why a lot of people um, don't really care for it because it's I don't think it's meant to be read in like a classroom full of 16 year old kids <laughs> who really don't I mean they're just sitting there just reading it and of course it's not gonna be interesting but if you have the right actors who can really bring it to life it's really really more enjoyable I think um, because I've tried to sit down and read a Shakespeare play by myself and it's just not I don't think it's just meant to be just read I think it's meant to be seen performed um so i really even if you're not a fan of shakespeare this is one of my favorite adaptations so i really recommend it it's got a great cast it's got um, michael keaton uh, emma thompson denzel washington um great cast and really awesome film i love it uh okay i'm trying to see what i have okay i'm gonna stop it right here um hope you enjoyed part one Sorry I've taken so long to do an update, but hopefully part two will be right up. <laughs>